The purpose of our video today is to go over eStudio, all of its little components, all of its intricacies, and to go over everything that you can do in eStudio. As you can see here, we have eStudio open on the screen. This is the latest version of ePrime 3.0, which is ePrime 3.0.3.60. Now, what I have open here is the Experiment Templates window. Now, this opens up whenever you first open up eStudio. As you can see, we have a couple of options to choose from. We have our basic template, a blank template, we have a counterbalance by a block template, a nested list template, and an open response template. Now, these are just the default templates that come with installing ePrime 3.0. Keep in mind, you can definitely include your own templates in this so they can open up whenever you open up eStudio and I'll go over those in a future video later. But for now we're going to focus on the blank template just so we have a nice clean slate to start from. So to select a template go ahead and select one by clicking on the name of whichever one you want and click OK. ePrime will then take a second to load the template into eStudio. Now if you have a larger kind of template this may take a little while. I have a very simple uh, blank template here so it was very quick. So when you open up eStudio, one of the most obvious parts of it is this really big gray area over here. This is what's known as the workspace. Editing all of the properties and all of the e-objects and all of the fine tuning that happens in eStudio all happens in the workplace, and I'll demonstrate that a little later. Moving over a little bit to the left, we have our Experiment Explorer. Now this is open to the Structure tab. The Structure tab in eStudio shows you the outline of your entire experiment from start to finish or from top to bottom. Right now, we have a few basic components in the Experiment Explorer Structure tab. The first one is the Experiment Object. This gives you control over all of the little properties about your experiment that you may want to change. So double-clicking double on it, you can see that right now. First, we have the General tab where you can put the author, um, just say who the author is. You can write a little abstract about your experiment and increment the version number of your experiment if you want to keep track of each specific iteration of your experiment. Next we have a very simple note sheet. This is just to take uh, any notes on your experiment if you're passing it off to a colleague or another researcher. Any notes that you know you may want to keep in mind when running or interacting with this experiment. After that we have the Startup Info tab. The Startup Info tab does a really good job of showing you all of the prompts that are going to appear whenever you first open up your experiment or whenever you first run your experiment. So right now we have our subject number. So it will ask to prompt for the subject ID and the session number, but keep in mind that each one of these properties can be toggled on and off. So if I want to ask a participant's name or their age or their handedness, I can definitely do that. And all I have to do is click that question mark to show the, the show the question and the checkbox here to log it in my data file. And I can deactivate them just as easily by clicking on that little check mark and then clicking on uh, that question mark there so it goes away. You can also add your own by clicking add or remove whichever ones you want or change the order using the move up and move down button. As far as the data file is concerned, there are a couple of important properties. First, this data file name will let you know exactly how the data file is going to be output. Right now it is set to its default value of experiment name, dash subject ID, dash session number. There also is the option to create a tab delimited copy of the data file by checking, uh, checking on this checkbox here. And then we have a couple of warnings in place here. So display a warning before overriding an existing data file. That one I find is extremely important. There is receive feedback on uh, feedback while data is being converted. That's if you'd like to see how the data conversion process is going. And then display a warning if conversion of the data file is not successful. Again, I believe that one's pretty important. Finally, there's the remove the e-recovery text data file after the experiment finishes. Generally speaking, most users like the e-recovery text file because you can back up any of your edat files after that. Now the Devices tab in the Experiment Object shows you all of the active devices on your computer that ePrime is going to have access to whenever it runs. So as you can see here, this blank, uh, blank template and this blank experiment is going to have access to my computer's display, its keyboard, its mouse, and the sound card. The button and the script object are special objects for ePrime 3 that are discussed or will be discussed in future videos. If you click Add, you can see that you can add a wide array of different objects. So if you have a Kronos device, for example, or a joystick, if you want to communicate through the serial parallel or a socket port, or just a generic port object, or if you want to record sound, or if you have an SR box, this is also where our extensions products show up as well. So this is a really powerful place to just show what objects and what devices are connected to your experiment. Next we have our timing tab. Our timing tab lets you know which clock ePrime is currently using either the ePrime primary real-time clock or the SNTP clock. Generally speaking, you only need to use the ePrime real-time clock for most experiments. 
our experiment advisor tab is kind of like our first round of tech support. So this will let you know if there's any timing issues and it'll let you know if there are any experiment design issues that it sees whenever you generate or run your experiment. And all of these little items here are different pieces of possible issues or different possible issues itself that ePrime is looking for whenever it runs your experiment or whenever you generate your experiment. And finally, packages allow you to integrate either with our extensions products or import little bits of script at any point. So that's what that experiment object does. The user script in ePrime is a place to set global variables if you end up doing some inline scripting in your experiment. Generally speaking, most first time users won't even need to touch this tab. Your session proc, and when I double clicked on it, you saw it open in the workspace over here. This is our timeline of events for our experiment. The little green circle on the left hand side represents the beginning of the experiment and the little red circle on the right hand side represents the end of our experiment. Everything that you want to happen in the experiment obviously goes between this little green circle and this little red circle on this simple timeline. After that we have our full script. This is just the simple generated version of your script file whenever you uh, click generate or click save on the object. Um, this isn't something that even can be interacted with. If you look at it, it's actually a read-only thing. And since I haven't generated or saved my experiment, it says you may need to generate this script. So there isn't really any helpful information in here right now. The unreference the object section is best thought of as the recycle bin for ePrime. So any objects you aren't currently using are housed here until you permanently delete them. Now the Experiment Explorer also has two separate tabs on the bottom as well. There is the browser, this shows you all of the E objects used in your experiment, and the attributes window, that's like, that lets you know every attribute that you're currently using. Now if we look just to the left of our experiment explorer, this is really where the bulk of ePrime's accessibility comes from, and it's called our toolbox. Now the toolbox holds things that we're going to affectionately call E objects, or ePrime objects, uh, is what that stands for. So each of the E-prime objects has a very specific function and will do different things in your experiment depending on how you use them. And they're listed from most useful to ones that may not be used as frequently. So the first one that we have here is the list object. Now the list object is where you're going to create your cross section of independent variables and any sort of uh, data that's going to be logged to your data file should be housed in this list object. It works kind of like an Excel spreadsheet and it also helps to control the flow of an experiment. If you follow along with any of our basic webinars, uh, we'll see or you guys can see that list object used pretty extensively. The next object is a slide object. The slide object is probably the most versatile object that we have in eStudio. It can be used for displaying multiple stimulus types at the same time. So if you want to edit, let's say, a slide object that has a, an image with a sound on it, if you want to record sound while a movie is playing, any of those types of combinations of stimuli can be edited and displayed using a slide object. It's best to think of these almost as PowerPoint slides. The next is a feedback display object. These are actually just specifically featured and very previously functioned uh, slide objects. These objects actually come with different things that we call slide states and will display different slide states depending on participants' answers. So if the participant responded correctly to an object, then the feedback display will show correct. If they responded incorrectly, feedback will show incorrect. And I go into how to edit these in a lot of the other future videos as well. The inline object is used for experiment control. So this is where we actually start writing inline script in ePrime. So if you ever find that um, ePrime's drag and drop interface is missing something to it. So if you want something conditional to happen, if you want response contingent paradigm, if you want, I mean, even a stimulus contingent paradigm, uh, this is where you would control that with an inline script. And we're gonna have future videos that cover these inline objects very extensively. So I wouldn't worry about them right now. Next is a text display object. It does exactly what it says it does. It simply displays text to participants. After that, we have image display object. So like text display, this one is just used for displaying images. And you can only display a single image on this image display object, unlike a slide object where you can display multiple at a time. Movie, movie display objects are, of course, used to display movies. Now the sound out object is a little different than all of our objects before. The sound out object is used to play sound in E prime, as I'm sure you've guessed, but the sound out object doesn't actually have a visual component to it. So if you add a sound out object to your experiment, you're not actually going to see anything change on the screen. All you're going to see is nothing, and you're going to hear something come from the sound card. Uh, so through your speakers, through your headphones, whatever you happen to have connected to your computer sound card. That's how the sound out object works. 
Now the sound in object works very similarly. Instead of having a visual component like any of the other objects, it's similar to the sound out such that it doesn't have a visual component. Um, all you have to do is just add one of these to your experiment and as long as you have a microphone attached to your computer, it will record sound for however long you determine. A weight object is used to pause the experiment. You can drag one of these into your experiment and these also don't have any sort of visual components to them at all. They actually just have, um, they just pause the experiment whenever you want them to. So they're really useful for adding an input mask to an entire procedure. They're also useful for just pausing the experiment whenever you like. The label object is used entirely for saying, hey, we are at this point in E prime. Uh, it's, helpful for, it's helpful for navigating around different portions of your experiment. It's also helpful if you have any response contingent jumps in your experiment. So for example, if the participant responds in a certain way, you would like the experiment to jump ahead a couple of objects. Or if participant responds in a certain way, you want it to jump back a few objects. These label objects are used to, or are used as markers in your experiment in order to say, hey, this is where I currently am. The package call object is used to import pre-written bits of script. They're also used in conjunction with our extensions products. And the procedure object, we actually already have one here on the session proc. This is just uh, our timeline from start to finish. Uh, generally speaking, you won't be dragging and dropping procedure objects into your experiment that way. Now just to the right of the toolbox, we have a properties window. So this properties window allows you to quickly and easily see all of the properties of any object that you have highlighted in your experiment explorer. So as you see here, I'm highlighting the session proc and my properties page kind of changes to show me all the properties of the session proc. And from here, I can change different properties. So if I want to change, for example, the notes property, I can just say, this is a note. And that allows me to quickly and easily change the properties pages. You can also access the properties page of any object by opening it first in the experiment workspace here clicking on the properties page icon in the top left hand corner and we have the access to those exact same properties as we do in this properties pane just you know separated by different tabs here so if you ever want to change a property of an object so for example let's say I find that I'm always changing my text display and I'm always changing the font to something that I like and something that isn't the default of E-Prime. We do have a great feature in this toolbox and of these properties um, that's called Toolbox Defaults. Now you can find that by just right clicking in the toolbox and taking a look at the very, very last item here called Toolbox Defaults. If you open up the Toolbox Default page like I had done, what you're going to see is a list of all of our E objects on the left hand side. And if you scroll down, you'll even see some slide sub objects, which I'll go over soon but then you can see all of the properties of each one of these objects. And if you'd like to change any of their default values, you can actually change them in here just by changing the property. So for example, if I want the pre-release property for all of my slide objects to not be same as duration, but to be a thousand instead, I would just change it to a thousand and click save. Now what that's going to do is every time I add a slide object, that specific property is going to be set to a thousand. So it's a really useful tool if you find yourself making the same edit over and over and over and over again. Now continuing with our tour of vStudio, we have our output window. Our output window has two tabs at the bottom. The first tab is used to show whether or not your experiment's generated, and if it has, whether it generated successfully. And the debug tab here is used for any debug.print statements that you happen to program into your experiment. Their values will output to this window. Now this advisor tab over here shows you exactly what readouts you have from this experiment advisor tab. So for example, if I have ePrime evaluating my match desktop resolution at runtime right here, if ePrime finds a problem with this particular experiment advisor module, it's going to print it out right here for me to see before I even get to run my experiment. That way I know if there are any potential issues before clicking run. Now speaking of clicking run, in order to run an experiment, we actually have three different ways. If you look up at the top of the screen here, the first one is this run button. This run button will run E-Prime in its normal mode. It will have E-Prime take over the entirety of the screen and will run the experiment just in a normal, um, just in a normal way. 
The next one we have is our test mode. So our test mode has a lot of different features. It allows you to run the experiment at up to four times its normal speed. It allows you to turn on auto response on the keyboard, and it allows you to interactively check and uncheck different objects to run whenever you're testing your experiment. So if, for example, I know the first half of my experiment works fine, in e-run test, I have the option to unselect that and not run those objects while my experiment is being tested. Now the third option we have is called windowed mode. Windowed mode is where you run your experiment in its own separate window on your, on your computer. So instead of taking up the entire screen, it only takes up a small window and that's of course used for testing. This little block object right here next to the run button is generate. This allows you to generate a file called a .ebs3 file. The .ebs3 file just stands for eBasic Script 3.0. The eBasic Script 3.0 is just the runtime version of your eStudio file, and it is much easier and much more portable than your, EB or than your ES3 file right here. So we generally recommend clicking Generate before clicking Run. Note that the Generate button, if you have inline script, will also catch syntax errors in any inline script that you create. Just to the left, we have a little Save button. We also have an Open button, and then if you'd like to make a new ePrime experiment, we have a little New button uh, right there as well. As far as the menu bar on the top is concerned, if you click on File, you can also access the new Open, Save, and Save As properties. And then underneath, you can see your eight most frequently or most recently used uh, eStudio experiments. If you click on Edit, you can see that we have a Find and Replace feature. Our Find and Replace feature actually works for all of our objects in eStudio, and you can actually access all of the properties of all of the objects. So, for example, I have, I could have ePrime search through any of the objects in the experiment, or I can only have it search my slide objects. And then once I have that, I can then pick what property of those objects I want ePrime to look for. So if I'm using a slide, for example, and click on property, you can see the list of properties that I have for the slide object and can have ePrime search for those uh, values or search for values in those specific properties. You can also have ePrime replace. So you can have ePrime search for any property and change it from whatever you specify to whatever you like. After that, we have our view tab. Our view allows you to take a look at different windows and you can either close them. So if I don't want to see my experiment explorer, I simply click on this experiment explorer listing and it goes away. Um, same with the properties. And same with our e-objects. It's all what you want to see basically in eStudio, and it's all very customizable. But if you'd like to see these parts of the experiment again, you can click on their entries here. And if there's a little checkbox next to them, then you should be able to see them here. And you may need to resize a few of the windows. E-run allows you to run our experiments in every way that I just mentioned. So using the normal run, using our test run, and using windowed mode, as you can notice, we also have our keyboard shortcuts off to the right there. Now ePrime does come with a bunch of different tools that you have access to directly through eStudio. The first one is eRun, which is simply used for running your experiments. eDataAid, which I'm going to go into much later, is our data analysis software. eMerge is used for taking multiple data files and merging them into one. eRecovery is used to take .txt files and turn them into eDAT3 files. Codec Config is used to program or to map the codecs for any audio and video file. This is mostly used if you find that you have issues uh, with any videos or any uh, movies or any sound objects in ePrime. Package File Editor is to make those pre-written bits of script that I had talked about earlier. This generally isn't a feature utilized by newer ePrime programmers. Our startup info editor is used to create startup info files. So if there's any type of demographic information or any type of information that you would need to feed into your experiment before the participant even showed up uh, to the session, you would enter it right here. Our sound tester program is used to test different sound APIs on your computer to determine which one plays with the best clarity and with most millisecond accuracy. Now the Windows Device Manager actually opens up the Windows Device Manager applet on your computer and is used to determine all sorts of things about your computer. The main goal of this, or the main point that most users go to here, is to determine their COM or LPT number um, of their parallel or serial port. Next is our sound control panel. This lets you know what sound devices are connected to your computer, and this helps you determine through which ones E-Prime will play. 
and the joystick control panel lets you know what joysticks are connected to ePrime and then allows you to specify their joystick ID in ePrime's uh, device manager. Finally, we have our reset utilities window. The reset utility windows will reset uh, the look of eStudio back to its default of this. And then we have this options tab here. This options tab is very, very helpful. So first off, we have our general tab. Our general tab is where ePrime, uh, our general section here is where ePrime finds its My Experiments folder. Generally speaking, nothing on here really needs to be changed from its default. Um, eRun, this little portion here, lets you determine how eRun works and how it functions after you compile the script and then allows you to save the experiment and tells you how you do that. Windows positions, this allows you to determine whether or not you are actually saving the windows or your, the position of the windows whenever you open up ePrime. Experiment backup, this actually automatically copies most recent saves of your experiment. So if you find that you are running your experiment and for some reason your computer crashes or becomes unplugged and you are in the middle of making edits to an experiment, odds are ePrime actually auto-saved those experiments and you can copy your backup experiments to your desktop in a folder. Then we have the option to refresh, cop uh, refresh your copies of samples and tutorials. Uh, so those come pre-installed in ePrime under the uh, C Users Documents My Experiments 3.0 folder. There should be samples and tutorials in there as well. If you find that you've made too many edits and forget what the original version of these look like, or if you find that you don't have them, you can always click on this button to get your samples and tutorials back. And then you can check this button to log support diagnostics if you ever need to talk to a technical support. Uh, then we have a properties page here. The properties just uh, either make the properties window visible or show the description for each property. A very simple one. Toolbox just gives you a little bit more information about all of the E objects in our toolbox. Uh, at this time, you can't actually add or remove any specific E objects. So script allows you to uh, differentiate or allows you to edit how you're actually interacting with the script in ePrime. So you have uh, use syntax highlighting that's actually very helpful for first time users, show line numbers. Again, something that's very helpful and we have a feature called script sense which you can actually toggle on and off. You can also change the font of any script in ePrime that way. Our output tab, this allows you to determine what is in this output window here. You can either make it visible or invisible and it allows you to determine whether or not you're clearing this debug pane of the output window between each run of the experiment. Templates, this lets you know where ePrime is looking for experiment templates. In this case, it's looking in the C Users Admin Documents My Experiments 3.0 Templates folder. Please note that you can change this at any time, and I'm going to go into templates much later as well. As far as packages are concerned, these are those pre-written bits of script. This is just where you tell ePrime to look for those package files. So runtime, this allows you to change different uh, keyboard settings at runtime. For example, what happens to caps lock whenever you run an experiment? What happens to your number lock? Does it go to default? Do you make sure the number lock is turned on? Do you ignore the number lock? And the same with caps lock. Do you turn caps lock on? Is it set to default? Do you ignore it? This allows you to change those types of things in your experiment. And then updates. This allows you to routinely check for updates uh, with ePrime whenever you open ePrime. So after Windows, we just have our help. Now there's a lot of different options here for help. The first one is our ePrime command reference. The ePrime command reference is just a uh, command reference that lets you know all of the different commands that you can use with ePrime when using eBasic script. So whenever you're writing those inline objects, this is a nice repository for all of the possible features that you can have access to in script. Welcome to ePrime is just our little welcome page. Getting started guide is an online based starting guide. Documentation, again, this takes you to our product service and support site where you can access our documentation. We also have online resources available at support.pstnet.com or just a simple click of this button. This button here will take you to our user forum. This will show you all of your current registered products. This one will take you to our technical support team. This one will tell you all about ePrime's timing and how we get our timing and how we claim our millisecond accuracy. And if you'd like to learn more about your eStudio installation, go ahead and click on About eStudio. It will provide you with your serial number as well as some other important information as well. So that covers all of the basics of eStudio. And that's where I'm going to end the video today. Please stay tuned for future videos to determine how to use all of these objects and how each one of these different features and functions that I had talked about today interact with each other to help make an experiment. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.